In this video, I'm going to show you the laptop specs you need for electrical engineering. And first, I'm going to show you my laptop, the specs I have. And then I'm going to show you some of the most important electrical engineering software and the minimum specs you would need for that. And based on that, we will determine the absolute minimum specs you would need for your laptop. And as you can see, I have two MacBook machines right here. Um, this is a MacBook Pro. This is a 13 inch. This is a MacBook Pro. This is 16 inch. And this right here is connected to my monitor. And generally speaking, for electrical engineering, I actually think Windows is a better option because some of the software that you would need for electromagnetic simulations runs either only on Windows or runs better on Windows. However, I do personally like the user friendliness of the Mac Pro much better. And I think the Mac just overall has a better user interface. However, you can still run Windows on Mac if you want, and you could use something such as like a virtual box. And in my case, I use Parallels. So for example, as you can see, I have my Mac running but then I could easily switch, switch over to my Windows. And this is all running on the same machine. Now this is kind of unnecessary. It's gonna require a lot of uh, RAM and a lot of a uh, hard drive. So you don't really need to do this. If I was starting out, I'd probably just go with the Windows machine. So now let me jump over to my machine and show you what it actually looks like. And in my case, the machine I have is very powerful, but this like for a very specific reason, like I do have the newer MacBook Pro with the M1 chip and 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now this is a bit excessive for most people, but in my case, my research is on high frequency communication and high frequency antennas. And essentially when your frequency becomes really high, the wavelength becomes really small. So if you want to perform computations at these very high frequencies, very small wavelengths, you, you need more computation power. So this is only because of the type of research I do for my PhD. And in my case, I have up to one terabytes of storage, but uh, for most people, I really don't think that is the case. I'm gonna show it to you, I'm gonna prove it. So. In electrical engineering generally, especially as an undergrad, there's only like four pieces of software or five that you would need, which determine how powerful your computer needs to be. And those are pretty much like MATLAB, Python, Arduino, um, something that can run C++. And if you, for example, want to do any type of electromagnetic simulation, you would need ANSYS, HFSS, for example, um, and, you would probably, and you'd need Microsoft Word, which is pretty easy. So if you were to look up the requirements for each one of those, for example, like MATLAB system requirements, You'll notice that's actually not bad at all. You would only need around four gigabytes of RAM, uh, although eight is recommended. So we'll go with eight as bare minimum. Now, if we try Python, we'll see that's actually even lower. Like you can run Python very comfortably on only four gigabytes of RAM. And I'm only gonna talk about RAM because things like storage and processing speed are kind of given. Like if you have a computer with like eight gigabytes of RAM, unless you're running like a really, like, I don't know, single core computer or anything like that, they don't really make things like that anymore. You'll probably have something that's at least dual core or with four cores. So we will focus on RAM or memory as the main metric to track whether your computer is good enough. Now in the case of like Arduino, microcontroller, the IDE, like if we want to figure out what the system requirements for that would be, um, it's actually something um, even smaller. So there's actually a piece of cake. And Arduino is something that we use to interface with breadboards if we want to program micro it's a program of a microcontroller so you can like use it to make like an led blink or to like make an alarm clock or like a mini robot or something like that or you could do something even fancy things like a self-driving a small self-driving car if you write the type the right software which is generally written in c plus plus now if you plan on running something that like has some type of electromagnetic solver capability like ansys hfss um this is a very important software if you plan for example on designing antennas and the system requirements for that is we notice again, you need eight gigabytes of RAM um, and like a minimum, let's say of Windows 10. So I think this only runs on Windows. So if you plan on designing antennas in general, I would recommend going with a Windows machine. Um, and then in this case, you do have some requirements for a graphic card and you need a three button mouse, um, which I guess makes it just like easier to use. So again, nothing too crazy. Now, this is contrary to popular belief. Like as we can see, um, generally speaking, we really just need a machine that has eight gigabytes of uh, RAM and that's pretty much good to go. So uh, you will probably notice that most of these machines are not really that expensive. Um, so if we look for like an eight GB memory laptop, let's say with like a core, uh, like with like an i5 uh, processor, uh, again, nothing like too fancy. Um, and we try to search for that. But well, notice that actually some of these laptops are quite cheap and these are probably like more than good enough for the type of thing you want to do. Like in this case, you get 128 GB of solid state storage. And then in this case, it's a core i3. So I think that might give you some trouble. It might just be like a bit slower. But like in this case, for example, look at this, like it's an HP laptop with a really large screen with core i5, 8 GB memory, 256 GB um, 
hard uh, storage, the reviews look really good. And because the screen is really large, that's probably gonna be really good for like if you're designing stuff like antennas or whatnot. And you don't even need like a monitor. So this interface is probably good enough. And then we see like an even cheaper one here, for example, only 350, although this is a Core i3, so maybe a bit slower in terms of processing. And that's really what I wanted to get to mostly in this video is like, you don't really need anything super fancy. Like, yes, it's engineering, but you can, like nowadays computers have gotten so powerful and so strong that with like a very basic computer that's only a couple of hundred dollars, you can be up and running really well. You don't need a fancy or crazy computer. All you need is a brain that thinks and likes to solve problems. A similar thing to like taking notes. Like I take notes like this. This is my note taking process. It's a pen and a paper, but there are people all over YouTube that are like, oh, you need this iPad Pro, whatever, or you need this tablet, or they just overcomplicate all these things. Or like, like there are other channels that are like, Oh, if you're studying engineering, you need this like crazy computer, you need to do all these things and whatnot. You're not gonna be using any of that. Most of the time, you'll just be using like Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. And you're just gonna be like downloading stuff and typing stuff. And not to mention, most universities have like their own laboratory. So if you need to do something that is like extremely intensive, you could probably use one of the university computers. But as we can see with the AGB memory laptop, you could probably do anything you want with these softwares that I just mentioned, which are basically used in electrical engineering. Now, I did make a separate video about the software that I mentioned in detail and why I use it for my PhD. So it should show up somewhere over here. So you should go ahead and watch it. I'll see you over there. Peace, love.